Hello and welcome back to the Manga Education Podcast. I'm your host, Brandon Chen. I run a manga and webtoon studio that produces original IP, the anime manga webtoon space. I also write for some video games as well. And if you're new here, basically I just answer your questions about the industry that you guys submit. So these are real questions submitted by my followers and people on Patreon as well. So let's get right into the video. But before we do, drop a like for the YouTube algorithm. It really helps us out. Super, super, super important. And then also subscribe if you're into more education and the different type of content I put out on YouTube. And as you're watching the video, I would also encourage you to comment any questions that you guys might have for the next video. So let's get right into it. We're gonna start off with Patreon. If you guys didn't know, Patreon gets priority. So I pretty much answer a lot of the questions that are on Patreon. And then we get into the questions that you guys submit on social media. So Anthony Free Friedlander says, what are your favorite webtoons by other people? Okay, so I really liked the early part of Teenage Mercenary. I thought that it had a very addictive premise, like very overpowered character, slice of life aspects, but then it kind of got bland later on. So it was kind of repeating the same tropes over and over again. So uh, at, at a certain point I dropped that series, but that was fun at the beginning. Omniscient Reader, I think is a very nice twist on the system fantasy genre. And so I really like Omniscient Reader. The art's really fantastic as well. Pretty sure Studio Read Ice is behind that. Um, soul leveling, the art is really good. I'm not a big fan of the story. The story is just okay, but the art is fantastic. So I really like that for the, the art study on soul leveling. Jungle Juice, I think I talk about this series. It very much reminds me a lot of like shonen manga and the type of feel that that has from a narrative perspective. The art is also really strong from a line art perspective. And then the coloring is so good. The coloring is one of the best that I've seen in Webtoons. So it's Jungle Juice. Um, the Boxer is also a really underrated. Oh, maybe it's properly rated. It's very popular sports series. The art style is a less detailed. It's less detailed than a lot of the action series out there, but it works for this particular series. The way that the writing is done, particularly on showcasing different characters, showcasing the flow of action is, is really interesting. And honestly, it's a pretty solid sports series, even outside the webtoon space. So, you know, when you're comparing it to sports manga or sports anime or sports anything, Boxer is actually up there. It's pretty solid. Uh, Higan Bana, my favorite person who always submits questions on Patreon is asking, as a member of the master class with comics, do you have plans to serialize with them in the near future. I would love to serialize. I think right now, Komipa and I are focused on Angel Wings because we have a pretty tight production schedule in there. Very difficult to serialize a manga. At the same time as we're doing the Webtoon series, so we're kind of all in on making sure that Angel Wings, which releases in October with Webtoon, is the best that we can make it. So we're kind of all in on that. In the future, that would be awesome, but it's not exactly a priority right now because we're already serializing. Hyun Bana then asks, what are the biggest differences you notice between the Japanese manga market and the international manga manga market as a manga creator yourself. Is there a difference in types of stories, characters, art that appear to perform better or appeal more to either market? I would say that it's a lot easier to go from the Japanese market to the US market versus the US market going to the Japanese market. I think there are certain things from my recent trip to uh, Anime Expo, talked with a lot of producers and a lot of folks over there from there on the Japanese publishing side. And there are certain things from an art perspective, from a narrative perspective, that they particularly look for and that perform very well on platforms like line manga, etc. So in the manga space, I noticed that there's a lot more diversity of stories. Oh, diversity of stories. You might get stuff that are, you know, being serialized in Shonen Jump, which you could say have a general narrative, what's the word, tropes that they do follow, right? Shonen Jump, a lot of the series kind of feel, have the same spirit of friendship and perseverance and that kind of stuff. But, you know, you get different types of stories like stuff by Tatsu. Fujimoto, like Chainsaw Man, or another shonen magazines like Attack on Titan, etc. So there's a lot of very different types of stories coming out of the manga space. When you look at the webtoon space, you know, stuff that's publishing online manga, I'm noticing that the top series there, first off, a lot of them are romance, <laughs> targeting a lot of women. And then a lot of them are also very, um, what would be popular in Korea? So a good example would be like the soul leveling type series out there, or a lot of the Korean romance, romance series that perform well in Korea would also you know, tend to have some crossover with the Japanese market. And those are tend to be the ones that are not super innovative narratively. There's actually some Japanese producers that I met and they wanted to come over to the US market because one, the US market is growing a lot, but also because the readers here are a lot more open to different kinds of narratives. Like we're open to like 
like Japanese and Korean narratives, but the Japanese market, for example, is a lot less receptive to like a narrative that was created in the US, unless it's like a Disney movie, basically. Especially in the manga and webtoon space. Like a lot of the stuff that was shipped over from the US market, like Lore Olympus, the biggest series on webtoon, US at least, went over to, to, the, to the international market and was not performing at the international stage, which makes sense. It's not very anime manga vibes, right? And so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. I think it's hard to say whether something in the, in the, in the U S will perform in the Japanese market. So you definitely have to tailor things to, 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 to meet that audience almost like thinking with, if you want to create like a series in the U S that will be able to port over to Japan, you have to really think about honestly, the Japanese audience first. That's what I'm, I'm thinking about. You think about the Japanese audience first. And then honestly, a lot of this stuff ports over here and then you can find your audience here in the U S if that makes sense. Um, it's not going to be like a wide audience, like Deadpool and Wolverine. Right. But it's, it's, uh, it's an audience that is still international. So I think the ultimate challenge though is like hitting something that blows up in Japan and blows up in the US. That's probably the hardest thing to do right now. Let's go right to uh, questions that you guys submitted to me. What are some ways that you and your team implement animation techniques into your webtoons? So I really think of webtoons as like almost like the key frames of animation. So you're not really doing the in-betweens. So a lot of the stuff that you might do in animation and having people specifically do stuff like background artists, background colorists, all that kind of stuff. We have that kind of pipeline on my series Angel Wings, which is like, I think Komi Pa, who's the lead artist there, also worked in the animation space, which is why he wanted to build the team like that. But also he's from the manga space as well. So, you know, he's kind of got the best of both worlds there. I would say from the animation perspective, I mean, most of the influence that we have for the webtoons that we've been doing recently are definitely from animation. So I would say, yeah, we, we study a lot of like key frames, but even when you're looking at the key frames of animation, a lot of those key frames for the anime space are taken from like impactful panels from the original source material manga, right? So you could say, hey, we're taking some stuff from animation, sure. Especially from coloring because manga is not colored. We take inspiration from a lot of webtoons, but also a lot of like anime as well. Yeah, I would say like those are probably the main things that we really take away from animation. Webtoon as a medium kind of reads like you're watching something almost because you're scrolling, you have one panel on the screen. It's not like manga where you have like, I don't know, like five panels on your page. Page at, a, at a time and you're kind of like looking at all the pages with your single eye for webtoon you're kind of looking at one frame at a time maybe maximum two and that's why it kind of feels like kind of like watching a tv show uh, but you're scrolling to make the the show happen that's kind of the best way for me to explain that do you feel when you come up with a cool story idea but over time grow to think meh all the time all the time i have this um I think a lot of the old stories that I did, especially when I was a teenager, now I'm kind of like, eh, it was just kind of mid, you know, it's it fine. I was like a teenager coming up with it. But at the time, I thought that it was the best thing that I could come up with. And so as you improve, you naturally think your other ideas are lesser in comparison. And that's just because you're, you're, you're a better creator and you know how to build better stories and build better projects. So I think if you think that a previous project is below you, then that simply means that you've grown as a creator. Or or your previous idea was bad and you were just emotional and driven by emotion in the moment, maybe. Uh, what is your favorite stories you create and the one you have the most faith in? I can't pick between my children. Come on, crazy, crazy statement. Can't answer that. Did you talk about story ideas with your friends and family? What is their usual feedback? So a lot of my friends, the fr I have a friends who like anime that I've met through the internet mostly. And then I have my friends who are from like meeting in real life. A lot of them don't care about anime or manga. So it's hard for me to share those projects with them because they don't really understand the landscape. I do like to talk about entertainment, general entertainment, like movies, film, TV with them. And then I kind of gauge like, hey, this is what they like. This is what they, you know, they like this Disney movie for XYZ reason. They like this animation for XYZ reason, this movie, whatever. And then I kind of like take notes of that in my brain. And I'm like, oh, like this is what like, not normal people, but like, this is what like the average human being <laughs> consumes. And then I try and see like, hey, what do they, what do they like versus what do my anime friends like? So I always take into account that kind of stuff. But the most like feedback that I get Sometimes I'll pitch it to my friends who don't like anime just to see if this would resonate with like a normal audience outside of an anime lover. Good example is like Angel Wings and, and my series Double Kill. I pitched those to my friends who, who don't care about anime. And a lot of them were like really interested in the premise. And that means that the premise and the vibe resonates even outside of the anime space, which is good because if I want to go transmedia to live action one day, for example, then that becomes a lot more possible because of the premise, right? Versus like, let's say you do a premise for a concept like prison school. Prison school is an anime that is quite delinquent <laughs> and it's very hard to turn that into a into a live action series outside of the anime space because it would be kind of weird and it 
would not resonate with a lot of normal human beings that are not degenerates. In total, how many chapters do you write in a week or a month or a year? You know, I've recently been trying to write two chapters a day. They might not for be, they might be for a different series. They might be for one series, two chapters a day, which is, I try and do that like six days a week. Maybe one day I take off. It's not even taking off. One day I focus on production, which is like more art production or marketing or whatever it is. And so I try and write two chapters a day for most of the year. So you can do the math from the numbers on that. How do you manage budget for your studio for payroll and projects? I have a lawyer. I came from consulting, so I kind of understand budgeting for projects. Payroll, this is all business stuff. Like you can Google like a YouTube video on like how to run a small business. That's probably what I did. I think there's budgets that come from publishers and I allocate them in a way that I understand from my background in consulting. But yeah, I think it's tough. I think eventually as I get more projects going, I'm going to have to eventually start getting a person that sole purpose is to like manage the bank account and just pay people out. Can you tell me more about you working with another writer on a project? If so, doesn't fights happen? Yeah. So good example of, of that is like just a goblin, which is me and JK's manga writing just a goblin. We don't fight because usually what happens when you're doing any sort of series that's co-writing, especially serializes, that someone has to take the wheel. Someone has to take the wheel and the other writer has to be supporter. If you have a writer's room, like in animation or in film, it's a little bit different, but you move a lot slower when you do that because you have all these different heads, budding heads. I think they do that at Pixar too. They have different people. They have like a group setting and they're all in a they're whiteboarding and stuff. If you want to move fast, you have to have one vision and you have to have one person spearheading it and the other person supporting that writer. And so for just a goblin, as an example, Jack and I were very involved together at the early stages of the production. And then as the series went on, I took the wheel. And because of that, now I'm basically steering just a goblin with occasional feedback from Jack. For Blood System, which is the just the goblin spinoff that's happening, it's the reverse. So Jack is taking the wheel. I'm more supporting. So I, I'm not really touching the story. I'm just kind of giving him feedback and giving suggestions from an art direction perspective. But I'm not, I'm letting him run, run the story pretty much, right? And we're kind of like co-writers on that. Um, so just the goblins being run by me blood systems being run by him and that's the best way i think that you can write for serialized projects because you kind of have to follow someone's vision if you want to be able to pump out projects or chapters every single week and you can't be fighting you can't be arguing there's no time for that so that would be my thought process how do you stay organized working on so many projects i have like project managers i have someone who literally just bothers me when i have deadlines due um and then i have excel spreadsheets that i sometimes check but sometimes don't have time to, but usually I give the expel Excel spreadsheet of my deadlines to someone and that person chases me down. As you start to get more projects and scale, I started to bring in more people to help me be able to meet that scale and keep organized. How do you find artists to work with? Just hanging around on Instagram, having friends, generally seeing portfolios, just making friends pretty much. Are you single or married? Uh, I'm definitely not married and I am semi-recently single. Semi-recently as in... Like it's been like half a year maybe so yeah i'm 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 a single single fella just living the the best life in new york anyway um we'll have one more question is double kill going to match the horror things of jujuzu kaisen so if you didn't know double kill is my new series we're aiming for a november launch um it is with umer who did icarus rising and uh somnia with me those are both projects that we did like or somnia we've we've been working together since we were teenagers which is pretty crazy when you think about it and we were coming from the manga space now we got a, a webtoon serialization with webtoon and double kill is kind of like jujuzu kaisen bleach and john wick fused into one story which is really really exciting and very intensive is it gonna have the jujuzu kaisen horror vibes i don't think so i think we're kind of leaning more towards like a bleach type of vibe where everyone's kind of cool it's less horror or supernatural horror and more focused on cool cool colors cool characters badass like again it's john wick and bleach right and bleach is what inspired jujuzu kaisen fun fact and so i think yeah those are kind of like definitely the vibes that we're leaning into and especially it's difficult to do horror with a teen rating the way jujuzu kaisen and does it Jujutsu Kaisen because it's black and white manga it's a lot easier to do violence that can still get like a teen rating like shonen but for webtoon if we get a mature rating that's not what I want I want a PG-13 series so that more people can read it and uh, you know I think if you do too much 
blood or dismemberment and it's colored color makes it that much more visceral when you're reading it and that's why it's a lot harder to it's a lot easier to get like accidentally slip into that mature rating which is not what we want so i think for horror stuff like we're trying to stay out of that like too horror there are some like scary or like visually like intensive scary type stuff that might be like more monster vibes for double kill but it's not like people's arms and legs getting shredded apart it's not like you know someone getting cut in half or whatever there is like some violence that is pretty intense but it's nothing that won't go outside of like uh what i would perceive as like possible for a traditional shonen series anyway that's uh all we got for today's video thank you guys so much for submitting your questions um if you have more questions drop them in the comments this is a long ass video i'm yapping but thank you guys so much for watching uh like comment subscribe and i'll catch you guys on next week's video peace out